We all good to start? Are we? Yeah. Hi everyone. Hi. Um, welcome to Screen Queens, I think is the title of this. I'm, I'm Kate Box. We were all just saying before that we're like oddly really nervous and I don't know whether it's because you know you're normally used to talking about the, your work is kind of separate from you and, and bringing in your home life quite hugely feels a bit nerve-wracking. So I um, am going to use notes uh, to uh, just save me from the nerves a bit. Um, yeah, thank you all for coming. Um, first, I'd like to acknowledge that we're having this conversation on the land of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, and I pay my deep respect to elders past and present, and I'm very grateful to be here. A little bit of admin before we start. There's some comfy chairs up the back if you need, if any parents need to feed or have a nap, go for it. Um, there's a space upstairs with a, a kettle and a microwave. Just holler and usher if you uh, need some direction. Kids are obviously very welcome here. Their noise is welcome. Their running around is welcome. I mean, keep an eye on them if you can. Uh, but yeah, please. Um, there's books and colouring stuff up the back. And um, the music that you're listening to as you came in is Claire Tonti's album, Matrescence, which is available from the bookseller, and I'm going to get it. Um, <laughs> I'm Kate Box. First, I'll introduce these excellent humans next to me. Uh, this is Gemma Power, who's a mum mm. and a model and a full-time facilitator for ETMP and most recently starred as Hazel in Black Snow, which is on Stan. And you're so amazing. And I only just started watching it a couple Aww, of days ago. Thank you. You're really, really good. It was great. Yeah, yeah it was really good. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is yeah. Letitia Caceres, who's a mum. <laughs> and uh, an award-winning stage and screen director, associate director for MTC in the past and Queensland Theatre. Um, her screen directing credits include Bump, mm -hmm. uh, Spooky Files and Erotic Stories to Becoming. Okay. Um, and I'm Kate Box. I am a mum of three kids under six. I am a foster carer. I'm an actor. I'm a very tired lesbian because it's been Pride Month and I've been going out more than I ever go out yes. in my life. So um, if this goes off the rails, blame it on the gays. <laughs> uh, uh, so I think we'll, you know, this is kind of in a... Um, let, so there's us talking and there's also you talking. So you know, somewhere down the track we'll open it up for questions and conversation. And um, if you have anything, we'll try and engage as best we can in it. Um, so I suppose we're talking about a couple of things today. We're talking about the representation of, of parenting and motherhood on screen, and we're also talking about what it's like to be a mum working within the industry. So maybe we'll start with the first one. I think that uh, it's probably fair to say that we all know how important representation is on screen. Mm. Um, uh, it's not just a means of entertainment. It does affect how we, how we live our lives, how we see other people, how we think about ourselves. Mm. I think it becomes a part of our memory and our, our, our DNA. Um, it's a place that we glean information about the world and look for inspiration. Um, poor representation can be really damaging and good representation kind of has the power to change the world you know, in a really good way. Um, it can create community, it can fire your imagination, it can ease isolation, which is a very big thing I found as a mum. Um, yeah, all the good things. So. Mm -hmm. I suppose I'll open it up to you first. I, um, you know, when you sit down to uh, watch telly after you've, you know, put the babies to bed and cleaned up all the crap and <laughs> questioned all your life choices, when you get those 20 minutes in, um, do you see yourself on TV? Do you see the kind of mother that you are on TV? Mm. Uh, yeah, to, yeah, yes. Uh, you know, I, I, I feel like more and more so I do see the kind of mother that I am on TV mm. and it's reassuring that yeah. um, there's messy people out there doing their best yeah. and trying to um, parent and uh, retain a sense of self and, mm. um, and that that's okay. Uh, mm. So the letdown being an example of that, that was yeah. a... You know, a, a huge moment, I think, in Australian television when um, Alison Bell, who unfortunately isn't here today... Um, mm. Let down. So we had to make the joke. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, created that incredible show and spoke so honestly about particularly the early days of um, raising a, a baby and mm. finding yourself in, in a, new a whole new world 
with whole new set of friends and you know trying to reconcile who you were in the past and who you're going to become mm -hmm. uh, as this new person responsible for another human yeah. and negotiating your you know relationship with your partner and everybody in your life yeah, yeah. and you were kind of able to to laugh at it, but from the inside, not from the outside, not <laughs> yes. from a kind of point and guffaw kind of laugh. It was yeah. kind of, yeah, a knowing kind of, oh, yeah. thank God kind of laugh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How uh, about you? Oh, go, no, keep no, going. No, 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 no please, no. please. <laughs> I love how we're all like, no, no, you. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> you go. We're so giving. Um, yeah, look, I think um, it still has a, a, a bit to go yeah. for me as, as an Indigenous mum. Yeah. Um, as a young mum to uh, definitely elect us, all of those things for me as well. Um, but I think that's a beautiful space that I get to be in now of yeah, going, yeah. okay, well, what don't I see and what can I be a part of to create that yeah. for, for myself and for, for others as well like me. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, you were talking about with that, in that interview, we were talking about it the other day for Black Snow that one of the things that really drew you to it is that it showcased the matriarchs in your community. Can yeah. you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I, I speak on it often um, whenever I get asked. It, I feel like a broken record already where it's just like the matriarchs, I have, I the matriarchs, the matriarchs. <laughs> um, but rightly so, you yeah. know. Um, black women are the backbone for a lot of things, mm -hmm. um, not only in uh, our homes, but also in our communities. Um, and also in, in our histories as well. Mm -hmm. And I think for South Sea Islander mothers, um, they've just been this, like, I call them staunch, because they are, when you meet them, you'll know. Yeah, right. They are very staunch, and yeah. um, that gets represented very well yeah. um, on Black Snow. Um, but they're also caring and loving and very giving and... Uh, selfless in many aspects as well. Yeah. Um, but also the, I, I love that it showcases the struggle. Yeah. I'm um, just this honesty of like, yeah, we we put it together for the sake of our families and our community. But yeah. sometimes it's like it can be really hard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And we just want to go. You know what? Just stuff everything. And yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I love that it it kind of introduces that world. There's so much more to it, but, you know, there's only so much we can kind of squeeze into six mm, <laughs> episodes. Yeah. Um, but it just opens up a world of opportunity and conversations that I'm so excited to have, like this. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah. Well, I don't think this was in um, relationship to mothers when you were talking about this. I think it might have been in relation to trauma, but you were saying there's a point where you either kind of keep it to yourself and keep it together and keep yourself isolated or you share. Mm. And you were talking about your character in particular decided to share. And I know that that's not specifically about motherhood, but I suppose, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's why we're here and it's, yeah. It's all related, I feel. Yeah. Just a bit connected. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, I think, you know, when you get to a point where you have the opportunity to do so, I think there's a lot of work that goes behind that first. And yeah. then there's a lot of courage involved as well in, in deciding to share that yeah. um, because there's risk. There's risk involved. There's risk yeah. of whether people are going to accept what you have to share or, um, you know, question it or challenge it too. Yeah, yeah. And um, to be open for all of the above. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's, a, it's a strength yeah. Mm. I think there's also, I mean, there's so much internalised kind of shame and guilt as parents, like we know that. And I think a lot of that does come from story and come from the stories that have come before us way back, you know, from our Leave it to Beavers kind of thing where we are expected to be, you know, a certain kind of mother and experience a certain kind of thing. And, and I know when I first, when I had my first child, Robin, I... Um, I was diagnosed with postpartum depression, but not for a long time afterwards because I didn't talk about it because I just thought that I was meant to be deeply sad and terrified Aww. and alone the entire time. And I found the first kind of four months really, like, I mean, some of the stuff that was going on inside my head and in between me and that baby, mm. I was so deeply ashamed of. I mean, no, no, yes, I love her. Yes, no, 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 of course I love her. I'd do anything for her. Of course, of course. However... I was, I was genuinely terrified. I didn't want her on my body, but I knew that I needed her on my body. I didn't, and I, I felt that there was just, I, 
and I don't, I mean, I hadn't obviously had those conversations with my peers or my family, but I also hadn't had access to it mm. through story, I don't think. And mm. I mean, I know things are shifting a lot now and we have access to so many um, more insightful stories and messy stories and stories, uh, you know, of that nature. But I remember at the time going, I don't know this story other than kind of the bad mother <laughs> who's probably yeah, going to yeah, either failure. run away yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. or do some damage. Yeah. And so you're kind of filled with this narrative of, of where you could go wrong as, and so therefore silence yourself and therefore don't reach out for help when you need it. And it wasn't until, I don't know, I reckon it was probably three years later when we were looking into fostering and so we went to, um, we went to counselling to, to work out whether we were capable of doing that that she asked me questions about my first kid and, and I went, oh, that's not, oh, right, <laughs> that's not, that wasn't normal, that was going on. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and, and, yeah, and I think if we, yeah, obviously if we can access a mm. story and, and, and normalise kind of mm. a multitude of experiences, yeah. we're much mm. better off. <laughs> well, I mean, I think that was one of the things that was so loved about Bump yeah. was mm. that the way that it sort of started, the setup was, um, that they well, uh, Claudia Carvin and um, Kelsey Munro were particularly interested in in representing motherhood in a, in a fresh way, you know, mm. not from uh, the standpoint of someone who has already matured and is ready for it, but throwing somebody in the deep end who is completely ill-equipped and yeah. experiencing all of the things that we go through as yeah. mothers, no matter what age. Yeah. Um, so for those who haven't seen it, Bump is a, a shock, a shock <laughs> of motherhood, shock pregnancy. <laughs> That's right, a it's teen a mum. Yeah. She yeah. doesn't know she's carrying the, the child until she has the baby in the school toilets, basically. Mm. Um, and so one of the things that um, Ollie, the character, goes through is a kind of, a, of a terrible postpartum depression where she mm. immediately rejects the baby. She calls it a thing. Um, she won't have it on her. Mm. She makes a very deliberate, conscious choice to eventually breastfeed the baby. And you see this kind of delicate connection between parent and, uh, and child. And I think that was one of the things that made the show feel um, very honest and very original because, um, you know, we're obviously expected to fall in love with the baby mm. um, instantaneously, and mm. that doesn't happen for every person who has a child. Mm. Um, and, and that can be confronting. And to know that other people's experiences are based on truth and then are represented on screen in, in such a way um, can bring a lot of comfort for sure. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, I, I, I feel you. I, at the yeah. moment, my partner stepped out the door when we had our baby. Um, I felt to pieces myself. Yeah. You know, so it, um, I would have liked to have known yeah. that other women going, were, yeah. were going through that too, and yeah. we're not going to hurt the baby, yeah. or we're call not going to no. call me. Yeah, yeah, call me anytime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean that, that's that's one of the great things about seeing the messiness of life on screen depicted in mm. that way uh, of motherhood. And the yeah. other beautiful thing about um, Bump is that um, Ollie never gives up her ambitions and her dreams, and mm. that made her a complex and interesting character because um, you know we we've been conditioned from a, you know a very young age to to accept our roles as as a mother and that is the role that and that's that has to be your entire identity and mm -hmm. Ollie doesn't settle for that yeah. and nor does Angie yeah. the character of the mother played by Claudia Carvin she won't settle for the title of grandmother in a conventional sense either yeah. Yeah. she's not ready for that either and so yeah. that renegotiating of how do you raise a child in a contemporary world in a contemporary family and not give up your whole self um, was kind of the central, you know, question of the story of the yeah. series, and quite beautifully explored. I think. Yeah. Mm. I think it's. So are we going to say something? Oh no, I was just going to say amen. Um, <laughs> oh, I just, I think, also in that sense, you know, it struck a chord when you mentioned that she didn't give up her dreams and aspirations, and um, I definitely felt that. You know, I watched it and I went, oh. Cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's good. Because yeah. I definitely know I um, there's a sense of guilt when we do, or well, when I pursue things outside of motherhood. Every day it's like this, mm. just oh man, mm. 
does my son know he's got like does my son know I love him yeah, um, yeah, of is course. he gonna feel yeah. that yeah. is he am I ruining him yeah. I've already committed to like paying for his psychology appointments anyway <laughs> yeah. so that's already done yeah. um but there is still that thing of yeah what's um what am I sacrificing? And I think that's, yeah. And what, I mean, uh, uh, one of the things that happened while we were on set in season one was that um, we were about to shoot the final scene of the series and um, sorry for if there's if spoiling here, but uh, I'm, I'm not really giving anything away, but the, but the final sort of scene of the series is Ollie with her baby and um, and she has this moment where she, she confesses to the child, you know, I know we didn't plan for things to go this way, um, and then starts to set out um, what she needs to do to move forward. Mm. Um, and when I got my script, I was so thrilled about this scene because I, you know, it really articulated everything we wanted to say through the series. And then moments before I, w I was about to shoot it, I got new sides <laughs> saying, we've, we've, we reworked the end. And Good ways or not? And they'd cut right, right. all the, um, you know, the, 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 you know, forward, the vision that, you know, she had set for uh -huh. herself. They felt that it might, you know, create a sense that the, the child was going to, like, be inflicted with a whole lot of anxiety. And I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Did they put it back in? <laughs> so I'm on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm calling and I'm saying, listen, I, I'm going to shoot what you want me to shoot, but I'm also going to shoot this other version where she says it all, okay? Yeah, I'm right. doing it. Yeah. And they're like, all right, Latisha, all right. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> um, and so we did, we shot it, and, and it was so important to me that she should say on screen, we're going to lift our, our grade point average so that we can get into the advanced diploma while mm. she's holding this baby and nursing it to sleep. <laughs> Because yeah. that is motherhood. That yeah. is mm -hmm. when you know you, have, you love this baby and at the same time you've got things to look forward to yourself yeah. that belong to you. That, yeah. and, and on a kind of broader political sense, we know that it's a fact that, I don't know if it's across the world, but certainly in this country, if the mother gets an education, the next generation will do better mm -hmm. and so I couldn't not have this yeah. teenage girl say I'm finishing school yeah, it yeah. was important to me yeah. you know as a feminist to have that message yeah beautiful anyway it got in <laughs> yeah great well done congratulations <laughs> <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> I, mean, I mean I think that I mean obviously um, our story has changed a lot mm -hmm. over the years from you know leave it to beaver and I, I think a lot of um, I don't know why I'm using that as a particular reference. I barely I like even remember it. it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they would come out of the kitchen yeah. this way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. And I mean, I think obviously the, uh, the rooms, were, you know, the people with power for so long in the rooms were not the people that were living our lives. We're not, the pe we're, we're not mothers, you know, mm -hmm. and that is obviously shifting now. And so there are more voices um, running shows and in writers rooms that come from lived experience which can only lead to brilliant things mm. but I suppose even still there there is a sidelining often of mm -hmm. the story of motherhood and I wonder why I mean it seems like a very dramatic concept, you know? I mean, there's blood and guts and shit and disrespect. And I mean, I've never been more disrespected in my life since becoming a mother. Like, yeah. mostly from my own children. Yes. Like, all from my own children, yes. pretty much. And it feels like it is such a kind of extraordinary world to play in. And yet, mm. even when we're in the room writing the stories, sometimes we avoid it. And I don't know what, what that's about. Is that about an inbuilt apology or that we've we have kind of tried to make our lives as mothers invisible in the past so we don't interrupt the kind of productivity of our real lives out there like what mm. i wonder why we kind of yeah why those well, stories I think aren't that we yeah. still have to compartmentalize who we are in a mm. professional context like mm. we often will you know negate the fact that we have you know, the responsibility of, of parenting or, or a family because mm. we want that job or we want to, mm. you know, be seen as professional and, and we're not emotional, we're not this, we're not that, which mm. are all the things that are associated with anything that's feminine yeah. or... And yet they're all the things that make great art, are they not? Oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I think in some ways that's part of the, the, the problem is that we haven't embraced, 
you know, the working artist as the working mm. parent yeah. artist, yeah. you know, and, and that division is still, we're still very siloed, you know, yeah. and like uh, even afraid to bring, like I remember when I was still doing a lot of stage work, um, people would get upset if there was a baby in a production meeting or, you know, and, yeah. and you'd go, well, where is the baby going to go? The baby yeah. has to feed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... Now a lot of the time the baby's running back and forth behind Zoom oh, naked, yeah. just like, <laughs> they're here, Everybody. they're here, yeah, yeah. Literally, <laughs> I've gotten very good with like putting my mic on mute and off mute, just yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, very good, very good. I mean, I remember there's, I mean, there's certain, you know, t back on kind of representation on screen, there are certain, there's certain roles that I've had in my life where I go, I mean, I suppose maybe I would as a, as a viewer, but as an actor within it go, thank God, like, I got to exist in, in that world. Like, I had a really massive um, change in my life as an actor, my confidence as an actor, my voice as an actor, and also just me, Kate. Um, I did a show quite a few years ago. Robbie, my, my eldest, was about one and a half at the time, and I did this show called um, Riot, which mm. was about a... Um, the 78ers who, um, and a lot of activists at the time that led to the Mardi Gras and, mm -hmm. um, and I got to play this woman who was the first gay Australian to win custody of her child. It was also the first really outwardly gay role I'd ever played and playing a kind of out gay mother on screen for somebody who I'd never been closeted but I'd always been apologetic. And I'd always been secretive. I'd always use the word partner instead of girlfriend. And I would just kind of sit in a makeup van, hoping not to be asked too many questions. And um, and then suddenly you have kids, and people ask, you know, is their dad looking after them? And you kind of, you know, constantly, constantly. And then suddenly, playing, there's something that happened in playing this role, and getting to stand up and talk about this role, and talking about this working gay mother who abs of course just loved her child and so much of what she did was for her child but it was also just for herself and for her community and mm. and something happened to me in that role my 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 life became better because mm. of that role mm. and i think it was because i was able to exist and i speak it from a personal perspective but i you'd hope that there's truth in the viewing of it I got to exist in something very truthful for me and my identity and it was so deeply empowering and I've become a better actor for it, a better mum. Like I, I just, I f it was from that one character mm -hmm. that I moved through the world with greater ease yeah. and I'm so grateful for yeah. that and, I, and being able to watch it on screen and, and my kids being able to see it and you know my mates being able to see it and the guys that I sat with in the makeup van and kind of slightly you know ducked under the counter for as they were putting lipstick on my face could see it you know like it and I yeah and I think that from within it and from outside of it uh, character can be so incredibly powerful mm. absolutely and, yeah um, I had a sort of similar experience last year when I did, um, uh, it was a stage play, uh, it was the adaptation of Anne Deveson's memoir, oh, Tell Me I'm, Tell me I'm yeah, Here. Yeah. Um, for those of you who don't know the work, uh, um, Anne Deveson um, was a, a broadcaster in the 70s and uh, 80s and, um, you know, and, and had come up in the 60s where, you know, things were very, very challenging for women, but she, she was a trailblazer and, you know, uh, had her own show on, on the ABC, ABC radio and um, was a war correspondent, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So really kind of forged her own path whilst um, having three children um, and, a, and a husband who, um, you know, had also his, his issues with mental health stuff that were pretty serious. Um, and in a very conventional family and world. And her, her eldest son develops schizophrenia uh, uh, in the uh, late 70s. And so she wrote a memoir about her experience of, raise, of looking after this child and the love that she felt for this young boy and the battle that they go through together against the um, mental health system, which she unfortunately loses in... in and loses her son. Um, but for me, Anne 
never gave up her career despite mm -hmm. having these incredible challenges. Mm -hmm. um, she still took assignments overseas. She still, um, you know, spoke publicly. Then she became an activist uh, to try and advocate for her son, and in fact took on more more work. Mm -hmm. Started the, um, the the film and television and radio school in, in Sydney. Ran um, the um, South Australian uh, Film Corporation in Adelaide. Mm -hmm and tried to rescue her, her child, you know? Mm -hmm. And that, to me, is a refreshing look at what, m what mothers can do, yeah, you know, yeah. in the world, in, yeah. in that kind of broad scale sense that we don't have to be afraid to, you know, want things and, and um, stand up for things. And, and in, in that same way, we're still loving our families. Yeah, and, yeah. You yeah, know? absolutely, yeah. yeah. And those are the, you know, the mothers that we need to keep, you know, representing out yeah. there. And mm. absorbing. And absorbing. And watch it, yeah. 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 Have you had a specific character or um, film or TV show that you have felt most connected to? That's kind of... So I don't know how many people have seen Black Snow or know the backstory, but that was my first yeah. um, role. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> it was... So good in that. Hilarious. <laughs> Just excellent. <laughs> so... When I got asked to be a part of this and it was like screen, screen mothers, I was like, oh, they've got a lot of faith in me. I've only done one. And <laughs> get surrounded by giants like yourselves. Um, but I'm very, you know, just as you were sharing, I'm very, very grateful for uh, Hazel. Um, so that's the character I play in Black Snow. And uh, we had so many moments in the rehearsal room where I'd be reading the script and I'd just like, I would put it down and be like, she is me and I is her. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. it's like, I just need a moment um, because there's that, that, this just gift of oh, all these things that I'd had to hold inside and hold on to mm. and just kind of quietly wrestle with or smile through. Uh, she just, Hazel was so unapologetic with, mm. you know, things that were happening with her and um, how she saw the world and it was like, wow. Yeah. Um, I took a lot of that strength. Yeah. Um, and so we only finished filming, you know, not very long, uh, was it August last year and we released it in, um, we as in like I did all the work, um, <laughs> they released it in um, You did a lot of years. work. <laughs> yeah, you did, a, did lot a lot of work, yeah. Um, and you know, in that short period of time, I found m having to glean just moments of Hazel. Uh, you know, funnily enough, motherhood doesn't stop. Life doesn't stop. Challenges don't stop after, yeah. you know, we finish filming. And you know, I, had to, I went back to my normal life yeah. uh, in Brisbane. And there were so many challenges that just came up. And it was just so such a relief to kind of go, oh, yeah, no, I've, I've felt this energy before. Yeah, a I fictional can... character taught me this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Should we just bring her back up? Yeah, yeah. Um, so that did, was, yeah. Did you feel, um, how old was your bub when you were doing, when you were shooting that? Three. Three. And did you three. feel um, supported by the show as a oh. mum? Did you have your baby with you? Or? Yeah, they, yeah, they got a pram for him and everything. Because right. <laughs> yeah, I said, look, I'm going to bring my car up and um, we got a car seat. It was so good. I was, yeah. I was very, very fortunate. Mm, uh, that's great. Especially as my first acting experience ever to have such an amazing cast and crew um, and production team just yeah, yeah, really great. came with, you know, arms wide open um, from day one. Great. It was incredible. That's you know, so they're always like, bring Ty along, bring him along, and you can come hang out in the, in the caravan great. and have lunch with yeah. us. And Hadn't always been like that. No. <laughs> and this is the thing, I've, I've just, it was, to, yeah. to have that, you know. Well, uh, we forget to ask for it sometimes. Mm. Yeah, Which is yeah. part of the... How have you found it? Have you found the kind of support um, within well, it? Uh, did um, you do the technique of going, what kids? I don't have children. I'm no, here, just actually, me. Or did you no. go in full? Because I, um, I feel like when I, um, when I felt pregnant, it was like I got a lucky charm. Right, right. <laughs> and so all the things I'd always wanted started happening yeah, when right, I was carrying yeah. this baby inside. Yeah. Um, and so I remember when I first got my, my you know, big break in Sydney, I was living in Melbourne, um, I, I woke my partner up in the middle of the night and I was like, I 
can't take the gig. It's not going to happen because how am I going to do it and I'm not going to be able to, you know, and I'll never get there and the baby will be on the breast and how will we do this? And, um, and he said, okay, just sleep on it. We'll work it out in the morning. <laughs> It's three o'clock in the morning. Sleep? Um, I don't sleep. And, um, and then the next day, I called my my mother, um, mm. and I said, I can't take this gig, and it's you know, I, I, I can't make. It. And she said, No, 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 we're you're taking the gig. Mm. You're taking the gig. I'm coming to Sydney with you. Uh. Um, mm. And she flew from Brisbane, and my child was one at the time, um, and it was because of. Maria, um, that um, I was able to, you know, present my first main stage project in in Sydney. Um, yeah. It did cost me. Uh, Rocio stopped breastfeeding as a result, yeah, which yeah. broke yeah. my yeah. heart. <laughs> yeah. um, but something had to give. But the relationship that she got to um, consolidate with her grandmother oh, in that amazing. time, those six, seven weeks that they spent together, you know, stuck to each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, was the only way I got through that project. And yeah. my mother then consistently took time out of, you know, long service leave, vacations, however she could, and, um, and gave me, in her, you know, her, all her love so that she could look after Rocio and I could work. And, Amazing. Um, and of course, my gorgeous partner as well, who yeah. also would travel to Sydney and, um, you know, uh, be a stay-at-home dad, or yeah. we'd m m go to, a, you know, enroll Rocio at a school, or yeah. we've done a, a myriad of things. Brilliant. Mm. Which is the only yeah. way to do it. Yeah, I remember, really, I mean, it's very different now. I mean, I just came off a job uh, last year where um, the showrunners offered to pick up my kids, which is unheard of, you oh, know, like if amazing. I couldn't go back to school. We were in Tassie, and, and I was working for Kate McCartney and Kate McLennan, who are just oh. who are both mothers and extraordinary humans. And I was in a babysitter crisis, kind of hell. And they're like, "I'll get them." Like, these, you know, Amazing. these people are working 18 yeah. hour days. I was like, "Okay, thank you, thanks, <laughs> thanks." <laughs> but I think I. It's funny because now I remember and my agent saying to me, kind of mid career, when I when I first started having kids. Um, that and then I just kept going. No, when I when I had my first kid, I that it's a tricky time because I didn't really have. Um, I wasn't a like a. I wasn't a good spend actor in a way. Like I wasn't. People weren't. I wasn't a go-to actor at that time. So I was kind of. I felt the need to make myself an easier hire more and more often, and there was less kind of um, thought given to me and my family and career. Mm -hmm. So I didn't. You know, I had trouble asking for anything, and now, and actually, that's the time when I needed it most. And now, mm. probably as I'm a little bit better set up, I get so much more opportunities. You know, working for producers who will get a, a house for your family and flights, yeah. and the stuff that I probably really needed earlier in my career. But of course, you know, I wasn't a bankable actor then, so it didn't kind of come as easy. But I, I do remember, like, from a very early moment that I learnt. If I don't find a voice for myself as a mum within this job, I'm not going to be heard because a lot of the things that I need just aren't going to be offered to me. So I'm going to have to work out what I need and ask for yeah. it, which is deeply yeah. embarrassing. I mean, you're tired and you're exhausted. Yeah. Yeah. And you, I, I had a lot of internal kind of... Mm, I suppose I was a bit of a, like, uh, you know, hiding hiding my kids a little bit, like I can do anything and they won't get in the way, I promise, as yeah. opposed to going, can you bring us all, we, we come as a package kind yeah. of thing. And, yeah. and I remember very early on I was shooting, a, I was doing a show called Rake and I was six months pregnant and I was shooting a sex scene and my character wasn't meant to be pregnant and I'd had very close discussions with the art department and the costume department about hiding that and I was like, I got pregnant, like I, I got really <laughs> pregnant, like at 102 kilos. I was like, you got, I don't want to be weighed anymore. I started this out at 72, and I don't know what's happened. But let's just say there was a lot of sheets. It was a lot of coverage. <laughs> but I hadn't had a pre-discussion with the uh, with the director really, and we got to this sex scene, and and uh, he, uh, you know, was sitting there with me and the other actor, and we we're going through those storyboards as to what the scene was going to look like. And it was a pretty wild, you know, wild sex scene, and I don't do a lot of them. And uh, he said, so, Kate, you'll be on top of this other actor, and you're riding him up and down, and the rain's going to be pouring, and, st you know, lightning's going to be outside, and you're kind of going to be holding onto the bedhead, and blah, blah, blah. And I was sitting there listening, going, cool. Yeah, okay, all right. 
And I just was getting like all kinds of rosacea. I was just like, I'm going to have to say something. I'm going to have to say something. But I just couldn't, like, I couldn't find my voice there Aww. at all. Kind of went away, you know, had a little moment to myself and kind of came back. And I was like, um, sir, <laughs> uh, you know I'm six months pregnant. Uh, he's like, yeah, yeah, we got. I was like, if I do any of that, I'm going to piss all over him. Like, this guy is not surviving that sex scene. So we can shoot it, but you might want to run it past him and get art department to bring in a few more sets of sheets, because that is just, like, wild. And then he got deeply embarrassed, which was good. And uh, I got deeply embarrassed as well, of course, because you're talking about that. And, um, and then, you know, it just went to basic missionary. And I just kind of held back like that and just wrote it out. Um, but it was also, like, if I had, like... I, I almost didn't say anything yeah, yeah, because well. I didn't want to inconvenience yeah. this or, or interrupt the vision that he had, you know? Mm. And it would have been a disaster. But it was that moment just going, yeah, I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to talk up, mm -hmm. yeah. and, it's, and I'm not learnt at doing that. Mm -hmm. I had been a fairly quiet actor oh, on set a lot, and it's scary. Yeah. It's really scary. Yeah, I and the more we do it, obviously, the more our peers benefit from yeah. us, and uh, you know, and it just beca it does become a part of the language. But yeah. it's I had a yeah. similar thing with this new gig that I've just gotten that is shooting in Sydney. When I got the scripts, they they were all you know. Um, stories that were happening in Melbourne. And I was like, oh, this is going to be amazing. I'm going to get to work from home. <laughs> and then we had the meeting with the producers, and they were like, no, we're shooting everything in Sydney. How do you feel about that? And I was like, yeah. I've got a yeah. child. Yeah. <laughs> Starting yeah. high school. <laughs> so I, I managed to say to them, well, if you want me to do this job, then what it will mean is that I will go and I'll do pre-production and I'll shoot, obviously, and then, but I'm not staying for post-production. I will do post-production in Melbourne. Mm -hmm. um, that's the only way to do it. Yeah. Otherwise, it's too much time away from my family. And yeah. now, and they've agreed to take the whole family, including the dog, <laughs> for, <Aww. laughs> for, yeah. for two weeks. Um, so, yeah, we come as a package. And, yeah. and I think the more we talk about that yeah. and, and the fact that we need to stay together for our own mental health and for this you know the unity of the family because yeah. it's a lot on you know the partner that gets left behind and the, yeah. and the grandfather as well who's yeah. here today yeah. <laughs> yeah. um you know it's a lot yeah but it, it, it also i mean i couldn't do it without without them yeah. I, mm. I just wanted to share the story of when i got the job of bump um, it was the same thing. I had to leave. We were in lockdown. I, there was no coming home for weekends. There was nothing. It was like, you get on that plane and you're gone and you don't know if you're coming back. Yeah. Mm. And these guys are staying locked in, mm. you know, yeah. five kilometer radius nightmare. Mm. Um, and I said to my father and my husband, well, this is what I need to do. And my father very graciously said, well, uh, we've been holding women back for 2,000 years. I think it's your turn. You go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, great. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Yeah. 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 That's how you do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can't no, do I, it without your family. Oh, yeah. I 100% agree. <laughs> it was the same thing, you know. I, I didn't pursue acting as a career. I, I'm a full, I work full-time. Um, I went from dropping off my son and picking him up every day and being a part of all those routines mm -hmm. to, so we're going to film in Proserpine for three months <laughs> and you're in every episode. <laughs> yeah. And I went, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and just had to try and figure out what that was going to look yeah. like. And I, hand over heart, wouldn't have been able to do it if, one, my hus husband hadn't have said the, basically the same thing. Like, yeah. all right, but yeah, mm -hmm. this, if this is what, you know, you actually dreamed of since you were a kid and never had the opportunity, okay. Um, and my mum was like, well, I've got time up my sleeve. She, my mum, who was absolute, her work ethic is insane. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and would never take time off work, I feel like, for this moment, because it was literally, she had so much time on and leave available that she said, and she could have taken that off to go, yes. actually, and go on, on holiday. Yes. <laughs> and instead she took my son. And yeah. so my, my mum and my husband both came up to, to um, I was staying in Ely Beach. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sounds awful. Oh, so yeah. bad. Such horrible weather. <laughs> 
and they stayed with me for you know a couple of weeks at a time and yeah. would you know tag team and, and work it out that way and my son is just has the best relationship with you know his grandparents and and you know, his dad as well and yeah I, everyone gives me so much kudos for all these brilliant things and thank you but it, it really can't happen without support it yeah, actually no. we can't no. do it yeah. yeah because i don't know i mean for those who kind of don't haven't brushed the industry at all like there's this strange thing when you're working in film and TV where it feels like the most important thing on the planet, you know? Like where the schedule cannot be moved and the hours that come on the paper are the hours you will be there, you know? And that's this real kind of like bow down to this kind of, I will be anywhere at any time doing anything yeah, yeah. at any time of the morning yeah. and there's no negotiation. Yeah. There's a little bit of that in it, yeah. you know? It's a little bit of that itself. And call me before that and call yeah. me after that and I'm really yeah, available. Yeah, and, and you may come and you may not work and then you'll go home but you've just gone through 75 babysitters to get there and not work you know but you've got to be there just in case we need you yeah yeah and so scheduling around parenting around oh kind of something like that is just oh. like it's ridiculous sorry the it? word scheduling just triggered me really yeah 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 <laughs> um <laughs> yeah uh, b before yeah. black snow i kid you not i was very like you know we'd plan things in advance and <laughs> yeah six months in advance and then yeah. here my poor family is like so what's happening and I'm like I got to a stage where I'm like I will tell you the day of <laughs> yeah yeah when I get the cool sheet yeah and then maybe yeah. and then yeah which it, may not come in yeah. until 11 p.m. yeah <laughs> the night yes. before yeah if you're yeah. lucky <laughs> yeah I know yeah incredible yeah should we open it yeah. do you have any questions I we we'll just keep rambling but we can open up the floor yes Just in terms of seeing on the screen, because myself and my friends are going through, you know, perimenopause, menopause, older teen children mm. with potential health problems, and mm. then parents as well going through issues, and you don't see a lot of that represented. And do you see that changing anytime soon? Uh, well, I'd like to think that, that, that there will be opportunities for more of more stories like that. I mean, we're, we're all perimenopausal and <laughs> desperate for, you know, some intel into that experience. Um, and I, ver I know that there are um, artists out there that are developing work uh, around mm -hmm. this particular um, subject matter, like um, Feeney, uh, Queenie van der Sands, I know, mm -hmm. is developing some work. Um, uh, and Bumped tried to to do a little bit of that with the, the intergenerational family mm. dynamic, particularly in the Latin American representation, um, with the character of Bernadita, who you know slowly evolved as a character into someone who's also got more interesting needs and wants beyond just looking after Jacinda and getting mm. Santi married. Um, <laughs> mm. um, but yeah, I mean, there's certainly room for improvement, absolutely, mm. and you know our aging population should expect to see itself, you know, uh, authentically represented, mm. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, oh, I, and I certainly know that they're doing a lot of interesting work in, in theatre um, with The Weekend, I think, at Belvoir. Yeah, and yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I know that certainly in stage there's, there's been more, more room and uh, um, play role. Playwrights like um, Carol Churchill have devoted a lot of energy into um, writing stories for that represent older women mm -hmm. and their stories. I'm certainly excited to, you know, because I have really cool aunties, <laughs> <laughs> and um, you know, even working with Annie Saini, who plays uh, Hazel's mum, Glenda. Yeah, yeah. You know, oh, the stories that they have, yeah. um, incredible, and the struggle too, and just the realities of. Like you mentioned, just juggling, you know, grown children, grandchildren, their own personal wants and needs, and um, you know, I'm very grateful to have shared space with Ani Saini, and you know, those conversations have continued as well. So even in the space of um, you know, South Sea Islander mothers and grandmothers and aunties, and um, 
those stories also like need mm. to be told as well mm, in that yeah, space yeah. and the different responsibilities that get thrust upon them and mm. um, also just being able to reflect on you know the life that they had outside of motherhood too yeah because uh, there's a lot of responsibility um, within our communities to push those you know like we said earlier on in the piece push those aside those those wants and aspirations that just and it's a whole generational thing that I have no I I don't even understand mm. um, we talk about resources and access to all these things that we've got now and I'm so privileged to be a part of that generation mm. where I get to make informed decisions and around parenting and uh, life uh, as a parent and as a partner and career choices and you know all my aunties and things you know a lot of them were just like we never got that choice mm. we just had to do it mm. yeah, yeah. and so yeah it, it would be amazing to really explore that um, even as a young person too, I think it's important that we as the younger generation get to hear those stories as well um, yeah. so that we can, you know, give honour and um, praise where it is due. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyone else? How yeah. important is daycare? Sorry? How important is daycare? Oh, how important. Sorry about the question. Yeah. How important is daycare? For my family, crucial. Yeah, incredibly crucial. I mean, we only have one left in daycare now, but um, yeah. Uh, it's also, but because of the cost of daycare, I think it's also why I can't really do theatre anymore because I had three kids and I just, it, I couldn't afford it. I just couldn't afford to work in the theatre and have three kids, it just, and once I paid the rent, there was, I was on minus. Um, you know, theatre is a wonderful job if you're doing it all the time, but you can make a lot more money in film and television than you can in theatre. Mm. And it was a very specific decision to stop doing theatre while the kids were at daycare, because it was just not financially viable. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, uh, allow me to make a little question. Say, uh, watching a, a documentary on the FBS, mm. I think it was called, sex in the eastern Germany before and after the demolition of the, the Berlin Wall. Mm -hmm. And it's another the great losers after the, the, the reunification of Germany were women on the east in terms of sex, no more climate sex because there were no, no more free daycare. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't catch the last bit of that. No more what? There was no more daycare. So yeah. as a result, it, it impacted on women's lives yeah. and, it, and you know their um, sex life right? and yeah. their sex life <laughs> yeah yeah well, this is my father everyone yeah yeah right. yeah 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 yes. i don't know whether daycare has impacted my sex life i'm not sure about that uh, yeah That's a good question. i could just yeah um, but uh yeah i mean obviously without daycare we wouldn't have been able i wouldn't have been able to have the, the my job at melbourne theater company or yeah um yeah. You know, and I remember when uh, Rocio was about to finish daycare, she would say, she would say to me, I've heard that school's doing, you know, it's going to be really tiring and it's going to be, it's going to be really long hours. And <laughs> she, <laughs> she didn't know that she'd be finishing at three, not five not or seven. six. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, You're up for a break so now, kid. Yeah. Like, oh, I have to get gonna you. It's going to be a yeah. much shorter day for you. <laughs> But yeah. learning to cram, you know, your day into yeah. six hours was also an interesting challenge. Mm. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, if and if we and if we had more affordable childcare, then we wouldn't lose actors from the theatre mm. or from other industries. Um, mm. And that's one of the big crimes, I think, in this society: um, how unaffordable childcare is. Mm. Which mm. I think is the point you're trying to make, Carlos. Mm. <laughs> mm. I say, like, um, good. Daycares, mm. um, you know, I and I reason I won't delve into it because she's still pretty fresh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like how soon is too, it's too soon. Um, <laughs> but just touching on that, and you know, when you asked that question, I was just like high, like highly aware of my body just <laughs> now, like going, ooh, that daycare. You know, not enough is um, talked about in the sense of like when we're so desperate 
to find care for our children. Um, we want it. We want the, what's best for them, and um, you know, we've had a really good experience um, up until recently. Mm. And when so when it's a good experience with care and putting other people, um, you know, putting your child into someone else's care that's not family is a big deal in yeah, general. Yeah, it's a big deal. Yeah. Um, and so when something happens where that experience is negative, it impacts greatly on who you turn to mm -hmm. outside of your family support. Mm -hmm. And so a big thing for me now, like, you know, when I look for, you know, work and I, I want to do more, because um, I loved my experience with Black Snow, I want to do more work, um, and looking at the implications of what care is going to look like for my son. So mm -hmm. he'll be in prep soon, great. Um, but there's still this period of time where he needs to be in care. Mm. Mm. And um, as parents, um, we've just, yeah, we've kind of been thrust into this world of like, oh my gosh, what happens when the experience is not good? Mm. You know, mm. what do we do? Yeah. Um, and where's our support mechanisms yeah. and things like that. So um, conversation for another day, but yeah, it's definitely... I did have a moment when I came home the other day and this wasn't about me going to work, this was about me going to a big gay party. But I came <laughs> home and uh, I, this, the woman who was going to look after my kids couldn't do it and she said, I've, my, my best mate can do it, she can come around. I was like, okay, oh. mate of yours, brilliant, come over. You know, she got, it was quite a long session. It was like from 4 until 4 p.m. till 1 a.m. Like I went hard. Yeah. And I came home yeah, at 1 a.m. Yeah. and I was like, how did you go? She said, that was so nice. I had such a good time. I've never looked after kids before. And it was just, I was like, <laughs> I was like, I really left. I just left. I just assumed. And I was like, and she said, and they have such interesting things to say. And that's like, <laughs> It's like, oh God, oh God, Kate, I, I, what are I you mean, doing? What are you doing? That's the other thing is, exactly, I remember, uh, you know, being asked to attend this meeting or this corporate event or something when I was at Melbourne Theatre Company and, um, and I would say, well, I can't because you know, Seb's working and, yeah. I, and I don't have childcare that day. And they go, just get a sitter. And I was like, she's not a totally. dog. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> totally. I can't just I know. get a sitter, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like, I yeah. just don't get a sitter. <laughs> like, I, yeah. <laughs> Either I bring the baby or I don't go. Yeah. I don't go, you yeah. know? Yeah. Okay, That's I did it works. one time. That's the only time I've ever done it. I was desperate. I am not judging. <laughs> no judgment at all. At all. Uh, they're all fine. They're fine. Yeah, they're alive. They're healthy. And you came home. It was fine. I came home. They were in bed. It was fine. They seemed to like it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but the, and, uh, but the other great thing that I, I know I've got, and I've got somebody here who was part of this community. I'm blessed to live in Footscray, where we have an extraordinary group of, of working mothers mm. around us who um, have, we've all become very close. And uh, I know that I can also rely on them, so they know what yeah. I do. They, mm. they, you know, love and respect what I do. They support me. They're incredible. One of them is here today. And, um, you know, the, these are the things that we can do for each other. I know that oh, yeah. I can call Joe or I can call mm. Ray and um, they'll, they'll help me. Yeah. They'll always help me and I'll do the same for them. You know, when I'm in town, mm. I'm, I can drive kids to dance or I can, you know, and, and that's part of being, a, you know, a parent in a community and yeah, looking yeah. out for everyone else's little people and yeah, yeah. Yeah. just getting through because it's, it's hard true. for all of us <laughs> whether you work in you know in yeah. film or uh, in nursing yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, hey, I've got yeah. a question ah yes um you talked a lot about motherhood on screen but what about birthing on screen like in your industry when you talk about finding your voice yeah. to advocate perhaps for yourself, yeah. has there been an opportunity where you've been on set or something when there's a birth scene and it's all very old school to be able to speak about the reality or yeah. bring some realism into that? Well, I might hand this to you a little bit, uh, Letitia, just because uh, Letitia was talking to me earlier about how when, when you were first pregnant, there was kind mm. of a series of documentaries that came out in about 2010 that, were present, that presented birthing. This isn't indirect, but it will lead to it, um, that were about uh, birthing and you found the way that um, yeah, well, uh, labour was like represented. Yeah, I think minute, was... I think, was the, were the documentaries that were on at the time when I was about to have um, my child and mm. I was looking for, you know, birth stories that didn't end 
with you know in, in, um, intervention or you know in, in cesareans or whatnot, and all of these um, episodes ended up with you know a, a mother um, needing to use the gas or the uh, epidural or the you know, and it mm. all landed back at the you know, operating table, and I found that really distressing because I was trying really hard to have a natural birth, yeah. and, you know, I didn't realize that a natural birthing had become, you know, a, a kind of, you're, you're like a, um, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, a, 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 an agitator if you're trying to have a natural birth, yeah. Yeah. Uh, a, co a conscientious um, yeah, objective. Yeah, objective. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I found that kind of frustrating. And you know, and even with uh, with bump, that was a surprise delivery. And she sort of has the baby in almost in in the um, uh, in the ambulance. Mm. Um, she's having major con contraction, contractions in the school's toilets, and so that all felt really fresh. But ultimately, the baby came out with her on a bed with legs, you know, up in the... Mm. And I would have liked to have seen her just deliver on the floor. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but that wasn't my episode, so I wasn't going to fight for that. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, um, I didn't watch all of Offspring. I don't know how many kind of wild no, and wonderful births they had on that. I'm not... I don't... Oh, um, no, I, I, did, I, I did do the first season. I didn't have a baby in it, though. Oh, OK. But, yeah, mm. nor did I step foot in the hospital. <laughs> but, yeah, do you feel that there's a, a serious lack in some areas? Um, yeah, I think yeah. that there definitely is. Like, it, it, it needn't be a major change in scene. She mm. could just at least stand up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. right. Yeah. Yeah. Make a mess and... Shit on the floor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like shit you said, on the floor it's would be good. It's yeah, it's dramatic, it's dramatic right? Uh, yeah. Uh, I gave birth under a bed. I'd crawled so far under the bed and gave birth on all fours, hiding under the bed. So hard to shoot, but interesting. Yeah. <laughs> and it was dark. It was pitch black. Not impossible. Yeah. I don't know like why. They turned the light off. Uh, Jada was holding a torch, and I was on all fours under a bed. Good. Classic. Yeah. Oh, I love that. <laughs> what a, what a, that on the big screen, eh? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Any other questions? We're almost out we of time. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, my question is if and when you have experienced discrimination, how do you manage it? How do you deal with it? <sighs> I love how we all. Um, well, I, I, I had a story early on when I, the first film I did after, um, after, and I didn't deal with it well because I hadn't learnt to speak up for myself at that point and I don't think that the person I was negotiating with was feeling like they could speak up on my behalf. Um, but I, I was doing a film and it was shooting in WA and I, had, and I was taking Robin with me on my own because she was breastfeeding. She was four or five months at the time. I think it was a pretty, it was not long after. And um, I'd been, uh, the job was offered on dailies. So you, often when you work as an actor, you either get paid by the week or paid by days, depending on how much work you do. But you also get paid for the downtime that you're, that you're there if you're going away. Anyway, I think I'd been offered a certain number of days to... Um, shoot on this film and I just asked if they could be conscientious about how much they were flying me back and, and forth because I was taking Robin with me. And what ended up happening was I, um, they worked on my behalf to make my life easier which resulted in them cramming all of my work oh. into a very short space of time, which not only made the work days incredibly long and hard, mm. but it also meant I got paid half of what was originally negotiated because my days got shortened. So, but they were doing it to make things easier for me because then you won't have to fly back and forth all this time. And actually, I think probably what happened is they just, you know, rejigged their shed scheduling and thought we can get away with this. And, mm. and so, and I found, and that was my first job after having a baby and I was deeply emotional mm. about it. And I, that it got to the point where it was like, well, this is kind of what we're, if she doesn't want the job, it was a bit of that. And, I, and of course, I took the job because I wanted the job and I hadn't really done much work in that area before. Um, but it meant that my, yeah, my wage got cut in half and my work days 
got extended, got doubled really. So um, I just, after that, and after feeling so, I think I felt so sad about it because I, f I, f I felt quite clearly I was being done over, but it didn't seem like mm. other people saw that. Yeah. Mm. Um, it was a convenient, it turned out to be a convenience because it cost them less and it was reasonable. And that thing of people making decisions on your behalf happened a lot, I, I found. And I got better at speaking up about it, about going, actually, I do think very deeply and clearly and I schedule the hell out of this. Like, I'm going to do the thinking on it and I'll work it out. Please don't come back to me saying that you know how to make my life easier on this, unless you really do and it's not going to cost me anything, you know. I think it was a little bit of a peek under the curtain of the money game that I, that I found was overriding the people game and that, that was sad. And I'm much better at negotiating that now, but also I think people are much better at coming to the party and I don't know, perhaps the people I'm working with are not trying to get away with it, they're trying to actually kind of really elevate mm. me, I've found, in the last few years. But, mm. Mm. Uh, I'm, I don't know, I, I, I mean, I think I've gotten better at talking to my agent <laughs> about how to not get done over. Um, I know for a fact that I've never been paid the same wage as my male counterparts across my entire career. Um, cool. Something that, what, pardon? Cool. Yeah. That's cool. That's pretty cool. That's cool, it? man. Yeah. Like your entire career. Just cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> my entire career. Yeah. For yeah. the same job. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so it's something that, that I try not to dwell too much on it, but it does um, hurt mm. um, to know that there's that pay gap so evident mm -hmm. and that people who were in charge of my fee knew all along. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I, similarly to you, Kate, I think I've gotten a bit better at uh, not letting them pull the uh, wool over my eyes yeah. and, um, and my agent is very good also at that and I know that, for example, there was a negotiation for a film and, um, and they kept wanting to bring the fee down and then they you know they accidentally sh they accidentally said look the fee for this other director is going to be this and <laughs> you know and so we can't pay her more than that um and um and my agent said is that person a man <laughs> and um and these people got oh up in arms and said oh no that's don't play this you know the sexism card but it was a man and so they came back to the party and said yeah okay mm. we'll we'll pay her what she wants which is the same as that man mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> um, but yeah i mean i'm i'm getting better at saying well i know what i'm worth and mm. uh if you don't want me that's fine but that's what you have to pay me mm. yeah Pain. Still makes me anxious though. Hey, even talking oh. about it, I'm like, yeah, I go to that conversation. Oh, yeah, I've got to back it entirely. Like I back myself. It's I back this entirely, and yet there's this still this kind of heart thing that happens that is somewhere so like deeply in <laughs> my body where I start getting anxious about it. It's like, why am I doing it? Why am I anxious about this? This just seems like a very obvious, clear, kind of fair thing, mm. and yet I'm anxious in the kind of asking of it. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I um. <laughs> yeah, look, uh, I'm Aboriginal in South Sea, so yeah. I, <laughs> I don't know no. much about yeah. discrimination. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, we took up way too much time but, there. <laughs> welcome to my life. Yeah, that's right. No, I, I, funnily enough, when you talk about you know your experience in the film industry. I think it's just so refreshing to think about my experience on Black Snow um, because it was completely opposite. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, but I also came into it um, already feeling empowered because of the work that I do outside of the film industry. Uh, so I work, you know, in facilitation and, and w with people quite often and a lot of my job is about helping to create safety and space and helping to, you know, find tools to find voice. And so what I found very early on in the piece was having to enact that and play that out in my own uh, world outside of um, my job mm. and outside of motherhood and uh, all the, you know, all my normal 
daily things, mm -hmm. particularly in a space where I knew uh, where female voices, young female voices, young black female voices mm. uh, can be not heard. Mm. And so I was very intentional with my actions and with how I voiced what I needed. Uh, if something didn't, you know, very early on in the piece, I had commitments to community. So I had to travel out to community right before I had to start filming. And the scheduling clashed with that. And I found myself going, oh man, I'm gonna have to tell them that I can't do it. I'm gonna lose this spot. And, um, you know, I reached out to a couple of, um, you know, my colleagues and just ask for their wisdom. And, you know, that's another thing that helps me is I reach out to people who have got a lot more wisdom than me. And a very important thing that was shared with me was, Jemison, you have a very, uh, you have an interest, you have a very special opportunity right now where you get to pave, pave your mm -hmm. path in this industry mm -hmm. and you get to set the tone and set the pace and so you get to decide whether you want to use your voice from the get-go or you're going to have to try and find it along the way and so I went, okay, and I called up the producers and I went, I can't come in on the dates that you've provided because I have community obligations yeah. and you're going to need to change it. And I was crapping myself <laughs> the whole way through. I'm like, I'm probably going to lose this. But, you know, what was, what was at stake? A lot, a lot more than just um, number two next to my name, which I found out was like really yeah. cool. Yeah. And it's very cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what happened was I had really good people who came to the party. Yeah. yeah. And um, I do give kudos to, um, you know, I know who ha people who they had to communicate this to was Travis. Mm. You know, Travis Fimmel, who, yeah, you know, I love Vikings, man. So <laughs> to tell Travis Fimmel, like, hey, can you, like, <laughs> can you just check out your schedule again, yeah. bro? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was great, you know, and he didn't, I'm sure he didn't have to. And I'm sure the people that were a part of this whole production didn't have to, but they came to the party. And that was massive in my eyes. I'm a very loyal person. And I take things like that to heart. And so, you know, That's my experience huge. with that yeah. was, yeah, it's, it's, I don't take that for granted. And um, Well, evidently the cultural safety for you guys was a priority on that show and yeah. that's, that's rare actually yeah. and it's something that we're slowly coming to the party on. Yeah. Um, but without it, you know, they could have lost a superstar. Oh, thanks. So, yeah. yeah. Well yeah. done to that production. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, really, really And well. the next one after who's yeah. going to... No, but uh, next yes. question, yes, but also the next person after you who's got to yeah. rock up and ask for what they need. Like, it's yeah. Really cool. yeah, yeah, it's really, really cool. Yeah. yeah. You're doing a good job. Thanks. <laughs> I think that's it. Is that it? Are we done? I think that's it. Unless there's anything else? That's cool. Thank you. Sleepy heads, they are still sleeping. 